My Gaming Edge. Hey guys, it's Clockwork from Team EMG, and I'm here with my first MG video. I'm going to use my first video to go over the basics of Scout, what you'll be running into if you decide to play this game at a competitive level. I see questions all the time, such as what sensitivity should I use? How do I hit scouts? How do I improve my movement? And hopefully after this video, all those questions will be answered. Alright, so I'm going to tackle the sensitivity issue. Most players most any player in this game really it's advantageous to use a sensitivity that doesn't inhibit your ability to like turn around pretty important to be able to do a 180 really fast and shoot something look around you because there's always going to be like a soldier above or something below you really suffer if you use a sensitivity that's too low because it's really hard to hit scouts especially up close I'm going to have to say that most scouts in this game would probably use a sensitivity that ranges from 7 inches for a 360 to probably like 14 inches for a 360. If you're not familiar with that term, it's the amount of inches that your mouse moves on your mouse pad to do a 360 in-game. So that was about 9-ish inches. You don't want to use too high of a sensitivity as scout, because if you do, your shots are definitely going to suffer from any range, even close range. It lets you jump around the scout a lot, it makes it a lot easier. So the first deathmatching tip I'm going to give you guys is um, in the realm of Scout v. Scout. Scout v. Scout is typically going to be the most common 1v1 you run into. And while you might spend some mid-fights shooting soldiers and demo men, whenever you run into the only other person alive on the team, it'll usually be a scout, if not a roaming soldier. Scout, I find many scouts ask you know, better players how they hit scouts, because it seems to be the hardest class to hit in the game for some people. I'm going to teach you guys how to be more consistent with your shots, because if you get to kill scouts quickly, it'll probably be the most important aspect of your game. So, I'm here in MGE with Sizer. I just told him to strafe back and forth so I could tell you guys how to tackle a scout. When he strafes to the right, you want to strafe to the left. You want to pretty much mirror what he's doing. You don't want to strafe to the right when he strafes to the right, because then you have to move your crosshair more to the left than you normally would have to. The hardest part about scout, probably, in that aspect, is messing up your own aim with your strafe. You don't want to do that, because a lot of scouts do that and that's how they miss so many shots. They'll strafe to the right, their opponent will strafe to the right, and then they'll have to swing their mouse all the way to the left to hit the scout. What you want to do is pretty much just want to mirror what he's doing. So I told Sizer to strafe back and forth and here I am trying to mirror what he's doing. And uh, it helps hit much more consistent shots. Now I'm going to use examples of when we're actually playing. Notice I go to him instead of actually going away from him. Another aspect of scout I want to get across is learning how to dodge when you're getting outplayed. When you're kind of getting outplayed what you want to do is jump around, you want to like try to fake them out, see if there's a teammate by you, tell him to come help you, try to get any advantage you can by making him miss his shot. Notice I see him, I'm kind of getting shit on, so I just start jumping around and it's a thousand times more difficult for him to hit me. I'm trying to just buy time and I actually manage to get the kill on him after just jumping around recklessly. It's actually pretty hard as a scout to be able to track that movement in the air because characters in TF2 don't actually have the smoothest transition in the air. So it's actually pretty hard to hit them sometimes. You could use that to your advantage as much as you want to. Here are some more examples of the strategies I was talking about. Uh, he hits me two good shots. So I'm left to only jump around and try to dodge him. I don't hit many shots, but I do get to finish him off in the end. What happens next is the perfect example of the strafing. He strafes into me left, I hit him. And he strafes into me right, and I hit him. It's almost as if like the scouts run straight into your strafe, which is actually a very efficient way of playing scout v scout. On to the soldier segment. Before I show you guys any actual videos of Scout v Soldier, I want to get a few points across. You don't really want to attack a soldier as a scout on the flank when he sees you. If he sees you in like an enclosed area, like let's say the left side of Granary 2 Garage, he will probably kill you, almost definitely kill you with no serious damage given, unless you can run straight into him and hit him with a meat shot, which isn't always a guaranteed thing. That being said, when you actually attack a soldier who isn't on the flank, let's say a 1v1, you want to use your jump as an advantage. Soldiers hate scouts that jump all over the place. If you can use his rocket to surf, if you could jump over his head, whatever you need to do to make his rockets less accurate, you should do it. Okay, so I'm here with Tyrone. I'm able to jump off of his rocket. We both missed a few shots, but I'm able to finish him off because he wasn't able to hit that other rocket. 
One surefire way to kill a soldier is to get the height advantage. Now, I'm playing Tyrone on Badlands middle in MG. I'm on top of the crate. Tyrone is forced to use shotgun because he doesn't want to risk using rockets and giving me a free shot, and I'm able to kill him. My last tip about fighting soldiers is to actually run into them. They, a lot of them don't expect you to be so foolhardy, and if you execute it properly, then they're going to die. My final tip for combat classes in TF2 is for the Dumbo Man. Dumbo Men are very easy to take down as scout if they don't see you. It's just a matter of running up to them and two-shotting them. If they do see you, however, it's a matter of finding an opening by baiting their stickies, getting in close, and then tricking them into missing all their pipes while you shoot them. While you find that opening, while you get closer, you should shoot some good shots at them. They have a pretty wide model, and it's easy to do some major damage from far away. If you're getting close, it's a matter of strafing back and forth very quickly, jumping over their head, doing anything that is difficult to predict. Don't run in a straight line, just make sure that you are unpredictable. In my example, I'm going to be playing Banny in MG, Brainery Middle. I have to get close to him, I'm not going to stay far away, because if I do, I get hit by pipes. Banny's trying to hit me with a pipe, and I'm slowly moving in close to him while hitting him with pretty meaty shots from far away. Again, I spot Banny, I try to get close, and I just pepper him and kill him. This next example is a good example of baiting his stickies and just getting in close. I see Banny, he's shooting stickies, I'm dodging them, getting in close, and then I start double jumping so that he can't hit me. And I get a bunch of good shots on him and he does. Alright guys, that's it for my first MG video. I just wanted to start out with the basics. Hope you guys understood it. I tried to use pretty simple examples, but you never know. If you don't get it, just ask. Later.